We're gonna go into whether or not weightlifting needs the Olympics, and we're gonna start right now. So recently I just returned from the Tokyo Olympics and a lot of different things happened specifically within the sport of Olympic weightlifting. In weightlifting, there was a lot of controversial calls behind you know, technical issues, the argument that bars have to be dropped just after the shoulders and being able to tell that specific individuals hadn't released their bar at the right height. There was a lot of calls around press outs that were very, very controversial as well and it brought to light a couple different issues. Right now, the IOC is discussing removing weightlifting from the Olympics, and this is crazy. This is one of the original sports in the Olympics, and it's played a pivotal role in growing the entire Olympics and, and the mystique behind the actual event, and now it's on the verge of being removed from the Olympics. And one of the things I wanna bring up is that I'm someone who has coached weightlifting all over the world. I've been to multiple senior world championships. I've coached athletes to multiple different junior world championship medals. I've coached Haley Riker to a senior Pan American silver in the total. Currently, I'm even down in Mexico at a youth Pan Am championship, and it starts to bring the light. This is a sport that does provide a lot of opportunities for various athletes. And it starts to make me concerned and make me wonder, what happens if the Olympics actually removes, if the IOC removes weightlifting from the Olympics? So the first question that I have to ask myself or ask everybody, ask the community is what do we gain? What does the world of weightlifting gain from being in the Olympics? And I think that first big factor is it's the notoriety, right? When you're in the Olympics, everybody knows it's the greatest sporting event on the planet, at, at least if you're not super focused on the Super Bowl. Everybody knows that the Olympics is this phenomenal thing where every single country that is under the IOC banner is bringing athletes in every single sport that the IOC recognizes as an Olympic event, and they all compete together. They all live in this small little village together over the span of two to three weeks, and then they compete together in this great, great event. And that's the one big thing is that even lay people know when they understand what the Olympics are, so that notoriety is on another level. And another big factor is the prestige. When you're in the Olympic Village, when you're walking around the Olympic Village, you're seeing phenomenal athletes in every single sport. You see athletes in handball, you see world famous basketball players, you see wor world famous athletes that run the 400 meters, whatever it might be. You are exposed to a whole new level of living. It's, it's an absolutely mystical world where everyone is literally operating at an extremely high level. And that prestige along with that notoriety is what makes the Olympics so special. And having weightlifting in with those sporting events and at the greatest sporting event on the planet is beneficial, especially with prestige and notoriety. The Olympics also provide a jumping ground for tremendous dreams and goals. And we'll see even in the discussions that a lot of athletes are upset and they're sad. Oh my gosh, my Olympic dreams are out the window if weightlifting is removed. And these are a lot of athletes that very well may never have a chance of making it to the Olympics. But the thing is, we can't forget those dreams, those aspirations that the Olympics actually does provide for a lot of various athletes. And that adds to the uniqueness and the specialness behind the Olympics. And then finally, there's a lot of countries like Australia that actually have federal funding for athletes that are competing in IOC regulated sports. So if you're in track and field and you're in certain countries or certain nations that actually take federal tax money and then divvy it out to athletics. So now you can sit there and say, I believe it is in Australia, I think their budget is about $8 billion and they take about $32 million out of that 8 billion and they divvy it up towards their athletes to try and develop a really strong team. A strong team on all regards, on all levels. So their men's field hockey is strong, their track team is strong, their weightlifting might be decent, uh, a couple other sports, badminton might be really solid. So they have all these different sports that have new opportunities because of that federal funding. Now, the US is not federally funded, the USOPC is not federally funded, USA Weightlifting is not federally funded, but a lot of these other countries do use federal funding to help improve their performances, and that creates a lot of unique opportunities, and it helps grow athletes all over the place that then can contribute positively and progressively to society. But the big problem comes back to, why is weightlifting even considering being removed? Why is the IOC considering the removal of Olympic weightlifting? And a lot of that comes back to doping and 
and corruption and the initial response is, well, why is there so much doping? Why is there so much corruption? And immediately we've got to start to think about it's, it's typically known as a fringe sport. The U S really hasn't gotten good at Olympic weightlifting until you know, 2012, you know, 2008. Yes. Uh, Cheryl Hayworth was a beast back in the early 2000s as was Tara Knott, but we still weren't really, it, it wasn't a very popular sport in the United States until the, the last couple of years. A lot of smaller countries that might not be seen as like sports performance countries tend to be very good at weightlifting. And in turn, there's currently an Uzbeki leader who's on the IWF board that's still fighting doping sanctions or doping regulations to try and change so that the IOC sees us in a more positive light. And these guys are still unwilling to alter their approach because of the nationalism, because they've also been known for doping. They've had a lot of positive drug tests and this has led to other issues. So we have corruption where judges might be getting paid off. We have the CEO of the USA weightlifting who's actually going on social media and saying there is undue evidence that the jury at this past Olympics was significantly tampered with, meaning they were likely paid off by these smaller countries to make poor decisions, to make these bad decisions, like preventing the success of Kate and I's lift. These are questions that, that bring to light this corruption. And if we have a prominent CEO who's bringing this out into the public and saying that this stuff is indeed happening, even today in 2021, that poses a substantial problem. So these smaller countries that are successful in weightlifting happen to be the countries that are caught doping a little bit more. They're paying people off. They're hiding things. They're, they're pushing things under the rug to promote their own sport. And we all want to see our own countries be super successful at the Olympics. But when it comes down to it, we can't have corruption. We can't have doping. We can't have all these big issues that the IOC frowns upon. So that brings us to the third key question behind this entire dilemma is what happens if weightlifting is out of the Olympics, what would happen? And I think the very first thing that would need to happen, if weightlifting, and this is going to go down on September 9th, 2021, we're gonna find out, if it is removed from the Olympics, the first thing that needs to happen is either the IWF gets entirely wiped out of the leaders or the entire governing body of the IWF implodes and it just is completely shut down and sent into the abyss of horror, right? We need to actually sit here and implode the IWF and arise with some new governing body, some new federation that can make more fair regulations, that can create progressive rules and progressive regulations that will lead to a much more successful sport that is weightlifting and in turn over time, show the IOC that we can come back into the games. And so after we would implode the IWF, the second key factor is, we're gonna to have to improve the viewing experience. One of the issues that I saw was that I was fortunate enough is that I was part of the Samoa contingent in Tokyo. And when I was able to sit down and watch the games, when I was able to sit down and watch Olympic weightlifting, I was there with you know past sprinters and, and discus throwers and, and one of the boxers and they could not believe that some lifts were illegal and some lifts weren't when they were very, very similar, some press outs you know, talking about the Kate and I incident where she dropped it above her shoulders. And on top of that, they thought that the sport in general was just incredibly slow. So some of these viewing experiences will have to change. We are gonna have to get rid of press outs, 100% get rid of press outs. I believe we should even get rid of an elbow touch. I believe that we should have to get rid of the rule of dropping it below the shoulders. I believe on top of that, to improve the viewing experience so that other athletes can engage in the sport and actually understand what's going on, it's gotta be a little bit faster paced. Use wrestling as an example. When wrestling was about to be removed from the Olympics, what did wrestling do? They got progressive, they got creative. They created push outs. They started to make shot clocks and shot clock points and they started to make things a lot more upbeat. Wrestling became this high scoring event and it's more fun to watch if you're a lay person who's never watched wrestling. So weightlifting needs to take that clue really, really quickly. Sitting around and waiting a minute and a half and two minutes to see one lift that lasts three to four seconds isn't worth it. Think about the NFL. People complain about the stop and go pace of the NFL and that they want it to be a little bit quicker, but then they sit there and they expect weightlifting to actually be successful. So we need to set it up to where it's high jump or a pole vault format or basically a ladder sequence where lifters can come in and take sequences through a ladder 
similar to what they do in the CrossFit games, something along these lines where it can pick up the pace and it makes it a little bit faster turnover. It's gonna change the game a little bit, but it's going to increase the viewership because things are gonna be happening at a much faster pace and that's what makes sports so enjoyable. So that's one of the fourth key factors behind changing it and what we would need to do if we aren't in the Olympics. And when we're doing these changes, the problem is snowflake boomers are gonna really struggle with this. Oh man, the press out, you're gonna get rid of the press out, or oh, the elbow touch. But these aren't things that are advantageous to lifters, okay? We need to make the lifting and the judgment very, very simple. The more simple it is, the more fun it is, the less corruption there will be. And then finally, on top of that, if there is an agency or there is a federation that we can create, if we're out of the Olympics, hypothetically, the doping needs to be once and done. If you are popped with an anabolic, you're done. And that's what the IWF should be doing right now. If, he, if you're popped with a potential TUE, and you can retroactively get the, the TUE, you're popped with a stimulant, I believe that you can make enough excuses that they should be two and done, okay? But if you're popped on anabolics, something like nandrolone, something like D-ball, stenozolol, so Lasha, Toma, gone. Something along these lines, all these serious drugs that are anabolics, if you're popped with them once, you're out of the entire sport and you can never compete again. So a once and done regulation is pivotal to the success of the sport. If weightlifting is removed from the Olympics, the only way this sport is going to succeed long term and be able to either get back into the Olympics or succeed with greater media presence is to change the format in the viewing experience, get the boomers to get rid of press outs, elbow touches, dropping above the shoulder, I believe even changing, putting into that, that ladder format, imploding the IWF, and then finally that once and done doping. Now, do we need to be in the Olympics long term? What is my overarching thought process? Does weightlifting need to be in the Olympics for the success of the sport long term? My answer, my belief is that no, it does not need to be in the Olympics and I will use CrossFit as an example. I believe in even powerlifting to a point. Now there is some issues currently with powerlifting, but using powerlifting and CrossFit as examples, I do believe that the sport could succeed without the Olympics. Now, I do believe it is favorable to stay in the Olympics because of the notoriety, because of the prestige, because of the dreams, because of the goals. But if we would get removed, we would still in theory have the Pan American Championships. We would still in theory have world championships, but it could impede on the growth from other countries because some of the federal funding from those nations will get removed in development of athletes, which is another key factor of why I do think it is favorable to stay in the Olympics while making some of these drastic changes to improve the quality of the sport. And that's the issue here. Wrestling was progressive. They made some drastic changes. Weightlifting has not done this. We just continue to make weight class changes. We think that weight class changes are gonna solve all the issues and they're not. It's not gonna solve the corruption. It's not gonna solve the boring competitions. It's not gonna solve the absurd calls that we see. We have to make top-down changes, and that might mean completely getting rid of the IWF. So with that being said, if it is removed from the Olympics, it can still succeed, but it's going to be a serious uphill battle, and we have to have the right leaders in place to help the sport grow. Ideally, it would stay in the Olympics, and we make these changes anyway. So we're gonna wait and see. It's a really important topic. Comment down below with what you think. Does weightlifting need the Olympics for it to continue to grow as a sport overall? And what are your thoughts? Do you think it's going to be removed? Stay tuned. September 9th, we're going to find out. Hopefully China has a pretty big influence on the IOC, as does some of the other big countries. And hopefully it does remain inside the IOC banner and it can continue to thrive. But we still need to make changes so that we can have a successful growth of the sport. Until next time, guys, peace.